Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers. On the broadcast today, we have an all-pundit show with a great lineup. Former Speaker John Osagari is here, former State Senator Warren Hardy, and Lindsey Knox. It's all coming up next on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Come join the month-long celebration during the Carson Valley Inn 13th Anniversary Giveaway with guaranteed $1,000 winners every drawing night and a $13,000 grand prize winner guaranteed. Come celebrate with us during the 13th Anniversary Giveaways at the Carson Valley Inn. Big R in Sparks is located on Bering Boulevard next to Smith's and across from Reed High School. It's a 50,000 square foot hardware store and a whole lot more. It's huge with clothing, power equipment, tools, and of course, hardware. Big R is located on Bering Boulevard and Sparks, next to Smith's and opposite Reed High School. Big R, hardware, and a whole lot more. It's the Lucky Lexus Cash and Free Play giveaways at Tamarack. Weekly cash and free play winners plus a 20,000 cash winner guarantee. And drive home a brand new Lexus NX30 or walk away with 42,500 in cash. It's a good time to win at Tamarack Casino. When in Carson City, Nevada Newsmakers records in the conference room at the Bank Saloon. Coverage of the 2023 legislative session is brought to you by Liberty Dental Plan, making members shine one smile at a time. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. The Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County, your RTC, our community. NV Energy, proudly serving Nevada, providing electricity to 2.4 million electric customers. And by Nevada Builders Alliance, building a better Nevada. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad on No Holds Barred Political Forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, coming to you from Carson City. Here we have a fantastic lineup for you. Uh, the former speaker of the Nevada Assembly, John Osagara, is here with Strategies 360. Lindsay Knox is Vice President of Government Affairs for McDonald Carano. And Warren Hardy is the principal with the Hardy Consulting Group. Pleasure to have you all here. Mr. Speaker, tell us about this session so far. <laughs> well, you know, every session has its own personality, right? right. Um, everyone is different in its own way. And I think we're about to find out this one might take on a life of its own with the, the announcement on the A's, right? So, so far, this has been a really interesting session. Uh, I would say there's a a very diverse group of legislators and much younger as well and a lot of new people right so a lot of people this is their uh, first time being elected so a lot of people are learning um, and that's always interesting too I would say so um, I don't know exactly what the life of this one is but I think this A's decision is going to probably define how the session goes really Lindsay you feel the same way I do I think that not only do you have younger legislators, you also have very young lobbyists. <laughs> it is a very new era that you are seeing in the building, uh, so the way that we all operate um, is changing. But I do think that the A's is going to be, um, you know, it's going to be the big part of the end game. Uh, and we will see between the A's and then, you know, the governor's bills, two of which will be heard uh, today, this afternoon, that will also bring um, some life into the building that I don't think has been there yet. Okay, why, uh, okay, is there a, a mounted opposition to the A's? Well, I think that you see public financing going into the A's stadium. We saw that with Allegiant Stadium and it got some pushback. We have new legislators that were not part of the Allegiant Stadium decision and there was a very different mindset with a group of legislators in that building on public financing when you are not looking out for constituents but you are looking out for a baseball team. You know it's so fascinating to me because I, and I understand both sides of uh, uh, the, the argument. I, I used to have this debate with uh, the late Senator Debbie Smith um, over her uh, you know, uh, opposition to the financing of some of these projects like Cabela's um, and the Legends Project up in northern Nevada. Um, you know, you have an empty piece of land 
that sat there empty for years, stations, you know, has stockpiled land around the Las Vegas Valley for years. Uh, but this one sits right on the other side of the 15 from the strip. Um, there's nothing on it now. This has the potential to develop something extraordinary that will not only be a benefit from the baseball point of view, but also allow stations to open up another property. Um, and for me, when I saw that $750 million for Allegiant Stadium, it was the room tax, and it turned out to be literally a couple of dollars on a room night when room rates fluctuate. Ask somebody how much it's going to cost them for an F1 night in Las Vegas, if you can even get one night. Um, and, and yet, this is an incremental tax district, right? Mm -hmm. That it only occurs right there. Well, listen, we're, we're, our, we're the quote unquote entertainment capital of the world in Nevada. Uh, and I, I was kind of embarrassed that we call ourselves with that without a venue like Allegiant Stadium. Now I think we can officially call ourselves that. And Nevada is unique. I mean, the, 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 business, the, the financing model for the A Stadium would be more traditional pro sports team where you do incremental financing for the area. A Stadium was a little bit different, but we have a unique tax in Nevada, right? That the, the, the generates that much money in Nevada that doesn't, the room tax, which doesn't generate that much in other, other venues. And the, the purpose of that, the design of that tax is to put heads in beds. And Allegiant Stadium's been a remarkable success, a remarkable success. Double remember, what it was I remember, to yeah, I remember we, uh, us talking about this when, when they were t debating it, I was on your show. And, uh, you know, I just think it's an, a natural evolution, and, and I agree with, with both my colleagues that this is going to be very interesting to watch this debate. Um, because, yeah, there are social spending requirements, there are legitimate functions of government that we have to, have to focus on. But at the same time, these kinds of projects generate and build and help the economy. And if we want to move away from gaming into a more traditional uh, enter, uh, um, entertainment model, these things are the type of things you do, and, and we better get ready for the NBA because, you know, Las Vegas is the primary target of all major sports, M Major League Soccer, you name it, because of the success of the Golden Knights, the Raiders, um, and, and presumably the A's, uh, this, is, this is a target for all major sports. And uh, on the south end of the Strip, you've got another stadium that's going to go in, and the money's already there for it. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, I agree with my colleagues as well, and the, you know, you forgot the Aces. The, the Aces, <laughs> the Aces, perfect example. Yeah, yeah, well, world champion Aces, uh, and the Desert Dogs, too, by the way. <laughs> so, I mean, we, you know, we are becoming that sports mecca, and why, why shouldn't we, right? Like, um, it, it kind of completes the picture. Okay, so why, all right, from all three of you, you say the Aces thing is going to be the biggest deal of this session. Um, what does it say about the rest of the session? Is it just because we have so much money that we're not fighting over money that this would become, or is it just the most newsworthy topic? Well, as you know, Sam, the, the money fight doesn't happen till the end, right? So we have to wait for uh, Economic Forum to say again, you know, exactly how much money that there will be in the end. You will see some tussles there. <laughs> in, in what regard? In regard to, you know, uh, I mean, cutting is very difficult. But when there's money to go around, who gets a piece of that pie is um, that's an uh, that's an interesting exercise <laughs> for sure. So, a lot, uh, you know, the way the system is set up, a lot of this is you know loaded towards the back back end of the session, and you know the next 40 days will be exciting. <laughs> and I, I think part of the tenor of this session is just the makeup. You've got for the first time in a while, you've got. The Democrats controlling both houses of the legislature, Republicans controlling the governor's office, and and, and I think it's fairly good news for Nevada. There doesn't seem to be a lot of effort by Democrats to send back things that they know the governor will veto. I think there's some of that going on, but I think generally people are working together. So it's a little anticlimactic in terms of people acknowledging that well, the governor's probably going to veto that, so let's not let's not push it. And in terms of determining what this legislature, the, the, the legacy of this legislature is, a stadium, uh, the A's deal is, is the thing that's going to delineate whether or not legislators can put their political differences aside and try to come up with. I mean, part of the part of the you know the big battle there is is what the culinary union might do with regard to uh, the already A's doing. Are already doing right, so that that's the political side. I, I get those side emails. Yeah, that's the political side of it. So it's going to be very interesting. I think had we not had the Aces and the Golden Knights and the Raiders, 
it, this would be a lot more difficult. But uh, when, with the backdrop of the success of those franchises and what they've meant to Las Vegas, I, I don't know how you really uh, turn your back on Major League Baseball coming. Um, the governor reached out, uh, pretty much every legislator that's come into the show has said that the governor reached out to pretty much every legislator uh, to visit with them. Um, what are your thoughts on the governor's presence so far? Yeah, I think he's doing a, a good job. Um, I think that uh, he's got great staff that are uh, really guiding him in, a, in the right way. And I'm, I'm sure that was, you know, a staff-driven decision to, you know, we need to talk to everyone, right? Um, and, you know, Ben Kiefer as the chief of staff was phenomenal, you know, worked well with both sides of the aisle, um, you know, experienced, understands the process. And so, um, you know, I, I've only seen one, one veto threat so far. Um, I, veto season is upon us, however, um, fairly shortly. But I think, like Warren said, there probably will be some bills that are sent over for political reasons. Um, you know, Democrats are going to try to paint the, the governor in a box on some things that they send to him, and the governor is going to veto some bills for his base, right? So it's not going to be a Gibbons, you know, 42 veto year, but I think you will see vetoes for sure. You mean you can't take politics out of politics? <laughs> <laughs> well, Lindsay, one of the things that's been very interesting is, you know, Ben Kiefer had, and your former colleague, uh, McDonald Carano, um, has such a wealth of experience from the media side. He was a reporter for the Reno Gazette Journal. Uh, he was a public information officer for Health and Human Services. Is there anybody that knows more about the budget uh, than Ben Kiefer? No, there honestly was, and again, I'm very biased to Ben, uh, obviously, but there was nobody better to be in that position than Ben. For a new governor, a Republican governor, to be able to work with both sides and do it effectively, Ben was his man from the very start, and they have built a wonderful team around uh, the governor from all of his staff. Um, he, I think he is in very, very good hands, and having Ben lead that charge uh, it was um, you know, picture perfect. And we are hoping to get the governor very soon on this program. We, we are plugging away at that. Ben. <laughs> <laughs> that. That may be the best thing to do. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting to see uh, somebody get into the role of governor uh, from having been a sheriff. Um, you know, because you're the CEO of the Sheriff's Department, and of course Clark County Metro is a huge Sheriff's Department that not only deals with Clark County issues, but national issues, international issues, the threat of terrorism. The 9-11 uh, bombers came uh, and met in Las Vegas. I mean, we know that there are threats to Las Vegas. Um, how have you felt the transition has been from being the head of Metro to now being the CEO of the state of Nevada? I, I mean, I think it's been seamless and I think it's been um, an amazing transformation. I mean, that's a tough job being sheriff. I mean, let's not, let's not kid ourselves. But I agree with John and Lindsay. I mean, he is exceptionally well advised. And, th and that is, that's the key to making that transi transition is to have somebody not on the campaign side, but on the policy side that knows what they're doing. And Ben is all those things plus very, very smart. And so when, when the governor indicated that he was going to be his chief of staff, I think a lot of people sighed a collective sigh of relief knowing that this was going to be handled that way. Now I think it's pretty evident as well that the governor's got the wisdom to seek counsel and follow it. And I, I give him very high marks. And, and I don't think that was a threatened a veto, I think that was a promise. That was, that was the it's a promise and, uh, too. <laughs> but that sent an important message early on, right? Because that that he was uncomfortable with the way his staff was was dealt with, and um, you know that's an important thing to do to seize control and let people know exactly what the what the rules of the game are. So again, I think he's exceptionally well advised, and I think he's following that advice and is doing an amazing job. Um, you know, you are the Democratic uh, leader of the assembly. Um, and it's, it was interesting to hear three different speeches by our now governor uh, prior to him being inaugurated uh, where he talked about the necessity, not the need, but the necessity to work across the aisle to get things done. Is that what you're seeing here? Yeah, I think we are. Um, and interestingly, just you know, to give Speaker Yeager some props here too, he went back and read all the rebuttals to the last 
four or five governors, uh, you know, the speeches. And I think that was a theme that he said too, is we have to work across the aisle. Um, we have to work with the governor to, to get some of these things done. And I, what I heard him say also was, you know, here's the things I agree with, and here's a couple things that we disagree with. Um, and that's just a good way of going about it. So I think he, the governor's done a good job, but give the, giving the Democratic leadership some props too for, for saying the same thing. Yeah, Speaker Yeager, and I also want to point this out, at a time when uh, legislators are coming under a lot of criticism for not meeting with the media, that Speaker Yeager has always been, even prior to being Speaker, willing to come on this program anytime we've asked him if it was possible and, and speak. So we really appreciate that. I think sp the Speaker is, he is, he's a good human being and he's the right person to lead um, that caucus and to lead the uh, Assembly. You know, going back to kind of what John said is, Working across the aisle, I've seen more legislators willing to have stakeholder meetings and engage with the other side this session than ever before. And it goes to bringing decent policy to you know the governor's desk. So it has been a breath of fresh air in certain instances to see all of us being able to work together, um, regardless of our interests. Hang on one sec. So so let me just get this clear. So you're talking about meetings outside of legislative sessions, yes. correct? Because the complaint, and we talked about this in the previous show, was that the two-minute rule is driving people crazy. That is, I think, I believe that sets a very bad precedent to making an argument for or against a bill. Um, but we are trying very hard because of that two minutes to now work on it before in hopes that we can negotiate in good faith to get a bill to a decent position. Uh, but I will say when we are big, dealing with big issues such as medical malpractice or on the A's deal, there needs to be more than two minutes to create an opposition against, the, against these things. Uh, you got and 30 I think that, seconds. Yeah, here. and I think that's working itself out a little bit. That's been a pretty prominent complaint, and I think it's working itself out a little In bit. In what way? I mean, chairs are starting to give more time and understanding it, depending on the issue, you, you know, that you need to give equal time to the opposition. That'll get better. That'll get better over time. It goes back to what John and Lindsay said with having, in terms of having new people that haven't had an opportunity to be mentored or serve as a, serve as a vice chair, but most of them are well-meaning and want to get it right. Uh, and I would agree with John with regard to the speaker, but I would add uh, the majority leader Kayla Zahar to that as well. I mean, if, if, if there seems to be, oh, she's been great to work with for me this session. She's got some pretty aggressive bills that my clients don't like, but she's she's always been she's always willing to talk. So. I think the leadership in both houses has been have done a really good job of, of keeping things under control and the governor. And so we'll see the end game, right? The mm -hmm. end game cometh, and uh, we'll see how it ends up. Yes, it does. All right, let's take another break, and we'll be right back. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. For 50 years, Nevada Heating has been keeping people comfortable in their homes. At Nevada Heating, call the Do It Right guys and get the air conditioning back on today. That's the Nevada Heating way. Why sweat for days on end when Nevada Heating can get your air conditioning fixed today? Call us today and we'll fix it today at 323-5585 or schedule us on our website at nevadaheating.com. Remember 2010 in northern Nevada, 13 to 14 percent unemployment, thousands of homes in foreclosure, Nevada's casinos closing? Families in the Reno Sparks area were hurting. Many were losing everything. Then Story County launched a game changer for our region, a public-private industrial partnership, streamlined permitting slash bureaucracy, attracting Fortune 500 companies that made Nevada their home. Story County generated a river of cash to area communities. Economic studies by the state and others for the Gigafactory consistently show positive economic benefits for our region. $4 billion in local wages, $17 billion in consumer spending and economic activity, over $100 million in taxes to Washoe, Story, Reno, Sparks, and Nevada, just for the Gigafactory alone. Story County, improving Northern Nevada one industry at a time.
This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers with our great panel today. Warren Hardy is here, Lindsay Knox, and John Asugera. Um, Lindsay, let me start out with you here. Uh, so we saw the drawings revealed uh, a couple of days ago uh, for the Brightline train station at Warm Springs down in Southern Nevada. And, um, you know, we've got the entire congressional delegation uh, asking the federal government to help fund this train that we've been talking about for decades. Uh, going from Las Vegas into California. Um, and an interesting twist on this, Rick Vallotta reported, was that Brightline is offering a stop in Ivanpah for the new airport. And yet every legislator I talk to, and I bring up Ivanpah, and they kind of go, what? <laughs> Same. <laughs> Where is Ivanpah? Um, you know, I think that it's, it's in the making. It needs to happen. We need to have that access. Again, Ivan Pod, I'm not exactly sure where it is. Okay, well, it's, but it's half an hour south of Las Vegas okay. in the Ivan Pod Valley, and it's the airport that we've been talking about for, what, 30 years, John? Yeah, um, And, um, you know, the, uh, uh, the head of the airport says, Ros Rosemary Vasiliadis, that the airport in Vegas will be out of space by 2030, and yet Ivan Pod won't come online until 2037. I don't see how that is possible with gaming. I, I would agree with that, and um, I mean, talk about an amazing leader at the airport. Yes. So I'm sure that um, they will be working their magic to try and get that figured out as quickly as possible, because um, we cannot outgrow that airport, and we need to figure out how to do that to keep people coming in. Okay, so is so, there a discussion under the surface that is not coming out in so, public? So here's the interesting thing about that when John and I first started talking about that 30 years ago. Sorry, Lindsay, you were <laughs> I was I, I, I was nine. That was going to be a that was going to be a, um, a, a cargo right hub. That right? was the initial. And, and now there's, I think, uh, a realization that it's got a, we need some passenger overflow too, and, and not necessarily for Chinese commercial. Chinese airlines because they need the length of the runways to take off during light atmosphere. And not only that, with Formula One coming, I'm hearing conversations about people are going to have to fly into Vegas get dropped off in their jets and then have their jets go down to Arizona to park until the event's over. So the whole dynamic of that has changed. So there's still the need for the cargo overflow, right? That's still there, but then there's a conversation. I, I know there's conversations about improving the airport out in Moapa Valley for the same reason. But this, so, but this is a, we're talking about 18,000 uh, you know, uh, acres of airport. We better get this started is, then. This is huge and it's been, in the process, but kind of under the radar for so long. But it's just amazing to me when I talk to people on the infrastructure committees and they give me a blank look and it's mm. like, okay, let's take another break. We'll be right back. Located in the heart of Carson City, the Bank Saloon is a historic watering hole with a modern feel. With a variety of classic cocktails featuring Nevada spirits, space for private events, conferences, and an incredible atmosphere, the Bank Saloon offers a great location to work and play. Come visit us. Located at the corner of 5th and Carson, we'll save you a drink. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over one in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. 
And back on Nevada News Mag as we continue our conversation with Lindsay Knox, John Asagera, and Warren Hardy. Um, last topic here, I'll start with you, John. Um, Adam Laxalt moves the DeSantis campaign. I just can't resist dropping that in for a quick thought. <laughs> well, that, I don't even know what to say about that. That's, uh, the whole presidential uh, debacle right now is interesting. Um, and um, it's, it's sad that, you know, a year out, you're referring to it as a debacle, <laughs> Lindsay? I, I did not expect anything less um, from Laxalt going to DeSantis just based off of their relationship and how long they've known each other. Um, but I agree with John that it is a debacle that we get to sort out, or gets to get sorted out, and we can sit and watch and watch and eat popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Warren, you get I mean, the last word. I think people ought to keep their powder dry for a while, see who else is going to jump in. I think Nikki Haley is, is potentially a, a candidate that can save the Republican Party. I, I just think the party, need, the Republican Party needs to do some soul searching. and. The answer is not Donald Trump. And I think uh, uh, Ron DeSantis at this point is the Jeb Bush of this era. Let's take a break and we'll be right back. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Imagine a magical garden that feeds Carson City's hungry and homeless, teaches our high school students agriculture, creates hanging floral displays to beautify downtown, and yet charges nothing. It's not magic. It's the Greenhouse Project. It's real, it's growing, and it needs your help. Go online to carsoncitygreenhouse.org so together we can grow it forward. When in Carson City, Nevada Newsmakers records in the conference room at the Bank Saloon. Coverage of the 2023 legislative session is brought to you by Liberty Dental Plan, making members shine one smile at a time. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. The Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County, your RTC, our community. NV Energy, proudly serving Nevada, providing electricity to 2.4 million electric customers. And by Nevada Builders Alliance, building a better Nevada. Our thanks to the Bank Saloon in Carson City and the Builders Alliance for their help with our coverage of the 2023 legislative session. We'll see you on the next Friday.